Hello and welcome back to the Academy of Historical Fencing in 2016. I hope you had a good Christmas and New Year. And today we're going to talk about something which we got uh, towards the end of the year and had a bit of experimentation with before we broke the holidays. And that was the Black Fencer Scottish Bow and Broadsword or Scottish Basket Hilt. To review this weapon, we first got to look at um, what it's trying to sort of represent before we go on to the pros and cons and, uh, of the actual weapon itself and how it compares to everything else on the market. Uh, first of all, I don't own a Scottish basket hilt, but I've handled quite a few. I do have an English basket hilt, which is uh, from about 1630, most likely. The, the basket hilt form developed around about 16... Uh, sorry, in the mid-16th century. Um, it was in service until well into the 18th century in Britain. And even when they moved on to sabres, the Scots kept on using the basket hilt in a fairly traditional form, which is not so different to the old English form. So that's the kind of thing where it was representing a full basket hilt. Now, basket hilt swords of that type, they range in weight from, that's actually quite a light one down at uh, one kilo. I have handled a couple others like it, but the Leeds Armouries that are exactly that dimension of weight. So you can find them that, uh, some, that sort of weight. But typically you'd expect um, a full basket hilt to be in the re region of sort of 1.2 up to about 1.4 kilos. And you can find them either side of that spectrum, of course. But the average, yeah, 1.2 to 1.4 kilos is what I found to be about typical. So that's what we're going to be comparing it to. And this uh, basket hilt they've developed, as you can see, it's synthetic bladed. The only other option we've had up till now is the Night Shop example, Red Dragon um, basket hilt. So that's the one we're going to be comparing it to, as well as a range of steel options. Uh, the basket hilt itself, as a training weapon, is one of the most sort of under catered for training weapons in HEMA, I would say, uh, much like Sabre. But fortunately, with Sabre, we've got people like Peter Regeni, who's able to produce a bowl hilted Sabre quite reasonably, whereas the basket hilt is a lot more complex. And up till now, there really haven't been many options, and they have been very expensive. So, not many people, certainly in our club and a lot of other clubs, have been able to afford a good steel basket hilt, steel bladed basket hilt. So, how does it compare to the Night Shop? Because that's the obvious one you're going to ask about, I'm sure, because this one is available all around the world. We've been using it for years and we've had a lot of good service out of these. It's still a really good training sword. But how does it compare like for like? Well, it's a little bit shorter. I think you're talking a 34 inch blade for the Night Shop and a about 32 for the Black Fencer. Though bear in mind that when you order from Black Fencer, they will make the blade any length you want. But this is ordered exactly um, as off the website standard specification. And basket hilts ranged uh, this type from about 32 up to about 34 or 35 inch. This is down at 32. I'm happy with that. It matches our um, sabers quite well, so that's nice. If you wanted to have it longer, just ask them. Now, how it matches up weight-wise, the night shop ones, they come in about 700 grams. The um, Black Fencer at 1.18 kilos. And that puts them in just sort of the, the historical range, particularly for its size, which means you're talking about quite a realistic feeling weapon. The balance is uh, much further back than a historical original would be. You're talking about mm, two inches, when you look at more like something like four, typically on a, on a basket hilt of this type, on average, again, these are averages. Remember, the spectrum is massive, particularly with Scottish pattern swords, or, or even non-pattern Scottish swords, because this could represent a regimental sword or uh, one of the sort of family swords or civilian weapons, for example. And even when you get Scottish military pattern basket hilts, they tend to use a great array of blades, including sort of family traditional blades, and they could range in sort of single edge, double edge, quite um, different sizes, widths and lengths and all sorts. So it's a nice standard size 32 inch. I think it works quite well. If you want longer, ask them to do longer. Now, the weight, as I said, that is a huge factor because the Night Shop Basket Hilt is made of plastic, um, and that means you haven't got the added weight of the hilt that you would expect for a basket hilt. To look at the um, uh, an original like this, um, English basket hilt of mine, which is from about 1630, you can see the basket is fully enclosed as opposed to the uh, mortuary hilt that this is based on, which isn't therefore a full basket hilt. Um, and you expect when you feel a basket hilt to feel a bit of mass in the hilt. It, they should be a bit slower than a sabre as a general rule because an equivalent sabre you'd expect to be about 70% of the weight, um, depending on what it's designed for, but roughly about 70% of the weight of an equivalent length basket hilt. 
So you'd expect it to be a bit slower and give the equivalent hand protection that you'd expect for the added protection. So yeah, comparing the two, we've got a lot more hand protection. The size of the hilt is obviously generally a little bit bigger overall, but there's an awful lot more hand protection. Now what that means is that this one, uh, the Nightshot one, tends to feel like a sabre because the sabres, most of the sabres people are training for have quite sort of modest guards compared to a basket hilt like this and therefore they'll be lighter. Uh, as well as the fact that it's got less coverage. So this represents a sabre, if you like, more than it does a lot of basket hilts. Whereas this basket hilt, a lot more hand protection, much larger hilt, therefore represents a basket hilt a little bit better. In terms of how they compare um, on the blades, the black fencer, like all black fencer swords, is a lot more rigid than an equivalent night shot sword. Now what that means is you've got less whippiness. It's going to feel a lot more like a, a steel blade and that has pretty much all the pros and cons that will go with it, is that it does hit harder than this, um, and it will not flex as much on the thrust. It'll still flex, we've been using these for the thrust perfectly well. You can see here, it flexes quite well, but it flexes to the level I would expect a good training sword made of steel, not um, a flexible synthetic like the Nightshop sword. So you have to tr treat these a little bit closer to steel. They are a bit safer than steel, uh, they do hit a little bit lighter, no doubt, but you have to give them the kind of respect that you would with steel. The advantages are they are that little bit safer and hugely cheaper. So, um, overall, what do you think of them? I'm really, really enjoying it. I've been using this one for about four weeks now. A few questions that people have asked about is, one, will, have, will this uh, metal basket cause damage to the blades? And the answer is, it will take a few chips out of the plastic, I don't really consider that an issue. I mean, how many years do you expect your training source to last? Um, I think it's going to last perfectly well. We use synthetics like the Black Fencer and the Night Shop stuff against steel bucklers, for example, and they take a few bits of ed edge damage here and there. It's no big deal. I don't think that's an issue at all. Um, durability generally is good. The grip is uh, nice and comfortable. I find it works quite well. You won't get a big sort of a lacrosse or red dragon glove in this, but um, you could very easily modify one, just take some of the finger plates off if you wanted the wrist and um, back of the thumb protection on. So that would be an easy modification if you wanted to get something in with more protection around here on there. Um, the basket obviously is rather substantial um, and rather strong. One of my concerns is, uh, before I'd seen them, is would this be too thin and just dent too easily? It will dent, uh, and there's no doubt you'll have to hammer it out here and there if you use it sort of to quite hard levels of sparring. But what I would say about that is, every single bar skills I've ever owned has had problems with um, bars denting and uh, weld snapping. This is an armor class, and you, oh, this has been hammered out loads of times. Sorry, a bit of dust there, a bit of fluff. Um, so that's, you can see the dents there, and Another example would be my Darkwood, which I've had now welded three or four times. And you can see this uh, bar here is flat. It's been welded multiple times here. Is that if you use them often and hard, those bars are gonna bend and some of the welds may snap. That's just a reality of it. Um, that's why you see most people with sabers, for example, opt opting for bowl hilts because they're just so much stronger. But if you want a traditional basket hilt, uh, like this, you're going to have bars that are going to bend and possibly welds that are going to snap. Of course, with the Black Fencer design, there aren't that many welds. Um, the only real concern I suppose you'd have is this part here where it joins to the pommel, and that's all welded on, which is quite nice. That should be very, very strong. There aren't that many welds on it, so I don't think that'll be a problem. You should expect a few dents here and there, and we've had a few. Um, but they should just be able to bend out. Now this steel is far thicker than pretty much well, most originals I've ever seen. The basket obviously is, um, is bigger than a lot of originals. Now this is quite a compact original, so don't give it a direct comparison because it's not as large a basket and it is quite compact. They vary quite a bit. But if you look at the actual steel, uh, it's a quite a lot thicker on the black fencer than my original. And again, when you look at um, original sabers, for example, saber hilts, and you compare them to our training versions, again, 
as a rule, the training versions are made much thicker. And why is that? Because we use our training swords once or twice a week with heavy contact over and over and over, and that's not the kind of usage you're going to have for an actual real sword. Um, a training sword is going to take a constant beating, which is why, for example, cavalry swords can often have brass guards, because it'll last maybe one or two battles of, of hard use and that'll be fine, and you can get it repaired or replaced. With our training swords, we need them to be more robust to withstand constant use. So it's a good thing that it's built a bit tougher. I think it's as tough as you can really make this without it being overweight. So um, I think the thickness is ideal. Yes, you will take a few dents and impacts here and there you're going to have to bend out, but I don't think there's um, much risk of welds breaking, certainly less than any steel training sword I've had of, of an equivalent type. In terms of protection offered, I've not had a basket hilt that extends this far back over the wrist before, and that's because I've tended to go for earlier English basket hilts, and this is characteristic of um, later Scottish hilts where the basket comes much, much further back over the wrist. And I didn't know how I was going to feel about that, particularly when you've got a um, gambeson or jacket on and your arm protectors and everything else. So far I've found no restriction at all, I don't mind it at all. I contemplated cutting this one piece off, which you could easily, if you wanted to, to reduce the basket size. I mean, with an angle grinder you'd have that off in, in a few seconds. But actually I've liked it so far and it looks pretty, so I'm going to leave it on there, I like it. Um, in terms of how it compares to the Night Shop Sword then, I've gone over um, the overall stats and the sort of feel of it. The huge advantage of course with this is the overall realism you're going to get compared to the Night Shop one is that yes, you've got a bigger basket, it's rock solid, it adds the weight that it needs to, the blade is much stiffer. So what you're looking at here is something that is much, much closer to steel. And again, give that the respect that it deserves. Don't go hammering away with them thinking that it's a safe training sword. It's comparatively safe, but you do need good training gear for it. And I would say you need to gear up as much as you really do for steel if you're doing some heavy combat. Um, how it compares to the steel options? Well, for quite a few years we used um, Armour Class, which is a, a Scottish company. They mostly make reenactment weapons, but they will make uh, some things that are better suited to HEMA, um, as well as Sharps. Uh, we used the reenactment ones originally, reenactment blunts, which were almost completely rigid and just, just handled terribly. So the actual reenactment bladed ones I wouldn't recommend at all. This is what we would call their pseudo sharp. And you can tell that Edge has taken some really nasty abuse. And um, I stopped using this on one because the Edge damage was horrible. I was having to do a lot of work on it all the time. And two, because it is um, really horribly floppy. Um, can't really show it. There you go. It's incredibly floppy. You think a night shot basket hilt can sometimes come across as a bit whippy. It's nothing compared to what these are. So I'm really not a big fan of them. It looks nice and it's quite reasonable price-wise for what it is, but the blade is so horribly whippy, it does take a lot of edge damage, and the grip feels like something off a blacksmith's hammer. Um, so, that's not great. And then on to um, the Darkwood Basket Hilt, which is, I would say, over the last few years, the most commonly used steel basket hilt in the world that I've seen. And, um, as I said, I've had this welded multiple times over, it doesn't have so much whippiness issues as the um, armor class, which isn't to say it's perfect. It still has a little bit of uh, issue with that. The edges are reasonable. Uh, don't take the horrific damage that the armor class does. Um, and the grip's much, much nicer. But the limitation of this is they're so goddamn expensive. Uh, you're talking about, to get into this country, about £600 once you've paid uh, shipping and duties. If you're in the US, obviously it works out a lot easier. Um, but even so, I'd still say it's a lot of money for what it is. Uh, so, compared to this, this is about £600 worth of sword to get in the UK, compared to, uh, it was about £70-something, pounds, £75 pounds for the uh, new Black Fencer Synthetics. I've actually found the rigidity on the Black Fencer swords is better, is that the flex tends to be more towards the tip, so they're as safe on the thrust as um, the Darkwood is, but they're a little bit stiffer on the parries, so in that regard they're slightly nicer. Obviously um, steel will bind um, a little bit better than, than plastic will, um, but there are so many other advantages. 
it binds a lot better than Night Shop one does because it doesn't have that whippiness, so it doesn't bounce quite like they do. The basket obviously is much more substantial and much better built, much tougher. And these sort of, some people comically refer to these as the basket ears, and um, I asked on the Black Fencer ones for them to leave them down because I know they get battered and broken all the time, so my preference would be to have them down. Uh, there are plenty of baskets that have those parts up and there are plenty that don't have any at all, so that's your choice, but I'd rather have the increased protection it gives here and not have to worry about them bending and breaking. So, I've had this for years, almost nobody in the club ever bothers buying them because yeah, they cost so, so much money and the armour class ones I don't think are that great. Whereas the Black Fence uh, um, basket hilt so far has been really great. Um, it is a huge advantage in many ways over the matchup basket. As I said, we've had years of good service with these, so um, I don't want to criticize them too much. If you want a cheap and very safe entry level sword, this is excellent. It's a lot safer to use than this for the simple reason that, yes, it does hit lighter. Uh, and it's off the shelf, you can have it in a few days. Black Fencer, obviously talking handmade, it's going to take you likely a few months to get them. And you're talking around about close to double the price if you're getting club discount on these. So, <clears throat> yeah, the more expensive, but you're getting all steel fittings, more hand protection, a more realistic, stiffer blade. And overall, a weapon that, when you're sparring and training, does feel a lot more like a steel original than this one does. So uh, do I recommend them? So far yes, I'm really really enjoying them and I don't see that they're going to have any major issues uh, in the future. Really really been enjoying them. And um, on that note, talking about Black Fencer, uh, in our latest order I had asked them to revise our sabres. This is the standard Black Fencer sabre that we use um, for representing Roth's um, sort of curved sabres, the 1803 Infantry Officer's Sword. And the only issue we ever had with these, which I think I brought up on a previous video, is a weld here where the two-part knuckle bow, a uh, knuckle bow quillen area, was welded. Um, and they've now replaced it uh, on request with this tubular section, which they usually offer on a lightly curved saber. When you order, you can have whichever one you want, and I would really recommend this. It looks a lot more pleasing to my eye. It looks more British, as opposed to the Polish one that they usually aim for. It's a classic 1803 British shape. Uh, and it's a lot tougher because it's round stock rather than flat and there's no weld. So that's a very, very sort of uh, drastically improved guard, I would say, for the Sabre. Really been enjoying these as well. So there you go. There's the review for the Black Fencer Scottish Broadsword or Scottish Basket Hilt. I hope you enjoyed it. I will post up some sparring videos with them over the coming sort of weeks. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.